Let's take a second to talk about vector fields because they are super interesting and you can use them for a lot of different things inside Houdini. So let's go ahead and set them up. So first of all, vector fields is going to be used for a lot of different things, mostly simulations inside of Houdini. And you can really fine tune the, the control with the vector fields. So I want to go over how to make them, how to visualize them and uh, just expand upon, I guess, how to, how to make and visualize them. Cause I have made a video on this before, but I want to cover this a little bit more in depth here. So let's start off with a, just an object. I'm going to use a spiral. So we're going to do this with a, you know, you can do this with geometry as well, but I'm going to use a curve to give us an example here. So let's raise the height up a little bit and let's just decrease the turns, just to get something somewhat interesting here. And I'm going to drop down a bound after this to get the bounds of this object. I'm going to give it some padding as well. So we'll do just one in every direction. It gives us a little bit of a, a cube here. And then we need to actually create our vector field, which is basically just a volume that is storing vector or vectors to drive velocity. So we're gonna drop down a VDB and in here we need to make the name velocity and I'm going to leave this as a fog volume and set this to a vector float. I also want to change this vector type to displacement velocity acceleration and we should be set up there. Then we need to drop down a VDB activate to actually activate this volume and we're going to set this to reference and that's all we need to do there. So to actually view our vectors and to create some, we're going to need a volume bot. And I'll go ahead and wire that in there. And in our volume bot, let's go ahead and dive in. And let's just delete this out. And let's drop down a bind export. And we can take our position if we want and just bind this to our bind export and let's change this to a vector, a three floats vector. And let's call this velocity. And we'll just leave that like that is for now. Now we can do a couple different things to visualize our, our vector field. We can drop down a labs vector field export and we can wire in, actually we can wire in this take a look at this and we can click this visualize and we get this and we can up the trail count if we want to get some more visualizers or if we want a little bit finer control over this if you dive in here you can see that this is being made by scattering within a volume and then a volume trail we can just drop down a points from volume we can wire in not our VDB activate, but our bound. And we can set this to have some jitter. Take a look at our points here. Let's also raise or lower this. You can raise or lower this to get more visualizers. Let's just move this out of the way for the moment. And then from this points from volume, we can drop down a volume trail same thing that was in that vector field and we can wire in our velocity field as well as those points. And this gives us essentially the same thing that we had here. So I'm gonna just use this just to visualize what we got going on. And we can dive into this volume VOP here. And actually with this volume VOP, I also want to wire in our spiral into the second input because we're going to use that here in a moment. So with this, I'm going to do a couple of things. So first of all, I want to have our spiral drive where our velocities are, are being directed, I guess. So we can do that inside of our volume VOP. Let's go ahead and we'll just visualize this. And in here, inside our volume VOP, we need to do a couple of things. Let's drop down a PC open 
our point cloud open. We'll wire in our position and then our second input into the file. And then we can drop down a PC filter. And we'll wire this into here as well. And actually before this, we need to do uh, a couple of things. I'm gonna drop down a resample. And the reason I'm dropping on this resample is I would like to enable this curve view attribute. So we're gonna use that in our simulation here. So let's take a look at our points, see just kind of what we're getting here. Can maybe drop this down a little bit, 0.08, I'm sure. And then we want to align our normals because right, we don't have normals and I'm gonna use the normals to drive our velocity. And we can do that with an orient along curve. I also have that option in the modify normals node that I have available on my Patreon. So if you wanna grab that, you can do that there. This project file also will be available on Patreon. So we'll just leave this as is, but let's go back down to our volume trail here. And actually, if we take a look at this orient along curve, let me take a look at these normals. You can see that we now have normals that are going along our curve. So that's gonna drive where our velocities are being pointed towards. So inside this volume bot, we need to set this PC filter now to our normal, so the channel of N. And we need to, let's, well, let's just wire this in. You can see what we get. So we get some velocities moving along our, our normals, which is kind of maybe what we're looking for. Uh, we can do a couple things. One thing that you can do is just drop down a cross product and you can see that that gives us these kind of like lines basically let's uh let's disable that for now let's come drop down a dop net and a sphere or not a dop net but a pop net and we'll wire our volume pop into the second input of our pop net let's look here let's drop Let's change this to a polygon, we'll up the frequency and let's drop this scale down. Uh, maybe something like that. Let's template this, yeah, that should be good. And in our our VOP here, or pop net, I mean, we need to come to the guides, let's turn those off. We can leave the activation as is. And let's just drop down a pop drag just to give us a little bit of drag and a volume advect by volumes or pop advect by volumes i mean so as i said before a velocity field is basically just a volume that has a bunch of velocity stored into it so we wired our velocity source into the second context geometry i'm also going to set this advection type to update velocity and we can change this advection method. This will give us some different things, but I'm just gonna set it to trace. And you can look more into it if you hover over this. You can go to this in the, the help docs and you can see what all the different methods do. But I'm gonna leave it as trace for now. And if I press play, you can see that we have our particles now moving along the, the, the spiral that we have set up here. And if I go into this volume VOP, if I re-enable this cross product and reset here, you can see it kind of doesn't really follow it along, but um, that can be useful for, for flattening out your velocities and having them kind of swirl a bit. So we are actually going to use that. We're also gonna use another cross product. So I'm going to take our, our velocity that we have set up here and I'm going to add some noise to it so I'll drop down a curl noise and let's go ahead and just set our display flag back here so if I wire in my position in here be careful with the curl noise as well let's go ahead and just take a look at it in our velocity field so this is what it gives by default if you set this to like sparse convolution this will give you some flat noise so just be careful of which type you choose let's leave it on perlin and we can maybe just change the offset a little bit 
doesn't matter too much. But then we can take this and we can drop down another cross product here and we can wire in our noise and our other cross product and wire that into our velocity here. And that gives us kind of something interesting here. I can bypass this and you can see that we're getting, again, something kind of interesting. Uh, it's kind of hard to really tell what's going on. And that's because we need to just make this kind of blend itself together. And the way that we're gonna do that is with a mix node. So we can drop down a mix and we'll take our original our original um, velocities. And now you can see that we're getting somewhat of a mix. If we go back to zero, we'll get our first input. If we go up to one, we'll get our second input. And you know, at the middle, we can get kind of a blend between the two. So let's take a look at what this looks like in our pop net. It gives us a little bit of breakup, not the full smooth that we have going on, but again, we have things just kind of stopping right there. So we don't necessarily want that. And we can also change the way our volume trail looks by affecting our PC open here. So if we raise this, let's just take a look straight at this PC filter. So as I raise the search radius here, this is going to kind of like fatten up our velocity field. So you can get a different look by raising or lowering this. So let's raise it a little bit and let's go back to our mix here. Now you can see that we get something a little bit different here. Let's go back to this pop nut and let's just reset, press play. And now we get our kind of particles moving around a little bit more and they're kind of following along, but they're still not following all the way up to the top. They don't really have the velocity to get through some of these kind of more, um, more noisy parts. So we can affect this a little bit differently with the curve view attribute. So if we drop down this PC filter, a copy of this PC filter, we can type in our curve view and then we can use a ramp parameter to drive the value of our mix. And we can blend this. So right away, if I take a look at this, you see we get very, very noisy values right at the start. And then it kind of goes to the more smoother values of just the normals of our spiral towards the end. So we need to take this and we need to invert this. So if I take this and set this to black, you see as I move this around, it's changing the position of where that noise is being applied. Now this black is very, very heavy on the noise. So I'm gonna bring this kind of lower and let's go ahead and select both of these and set them to B spline just to give us a little bit of a smoother fall off there as well. So I could take this and maybe, maybe this is a little too harsh. Can affect the color here. Maybe we get something like this. And if I take a look at our pop net now, oops, if I display our pop net, you can see that we have a little bit smoother particles and they start to hit some more heavier velocities, just kind of breaking up that that shape in the end. And I can I can actually go in here if I want to and drop down a pop force. Let's pause this. Let's give it a, a little bit of an amplitude here just to kind of break up where these particles are moving. You can see we get some added movement into the velocity field that we have here, which can give us, it just kind of breaks up that, that movement. So you can see they're kind of, they kind of stick to where they're at in the, the like follow trail basically. And that force just kind of pushes them to different points in this velocity field. It just kind of breaks it up and adds a little bit more interesting movement into it. 
So you can play around with that and get some interesting things as well as with uh, the curl noise. You can use different types of noises and things and just kind of break that up. But that is how you go about creating velocity fields. I am kind of glossing over uh, a big part of this, which is uh, the fact that there is no velocity outside of where this trail exists. And I'm going to make a second video on how to go about uh, creating that secondary velocity field outside of the where the trail exists. Uh, but we're basically just kind of doing the same thing, just blending a, a noise a noise field of velocities um, into where this this uh, spiral or our our curve is not existing. So that is a little bit more complex. So I will I'll make a second video on that. But this is the gist of how you go about creating velocity fields. And like I said, you can just take your volume VOP and essentially just plug in a curl noise and you have a velocity field that gives you some interesting results in and of itself. You can play around with that and get some very, very interesting looks to particle sims, uh, grains, all sorts of different simulations uh, this is used for. So play around with it and see what you can come up with. But anyways, hopefully this helped you out. I do have a bunch of other videos on my channel on Houdini doing a bunch of different things. So if you want to learn more about Houdini, make sure to check those out. I've also started to upload some shorts that have some helpful tips. So if you want to learn some quick, helpful tips like um, hotkeys and stuff, then make sure you take a look at the shorts because they will, those don't pop up as well on YouTube unless you're specifically looking for shorts. So just keep that in mind. But anyways, uh, this project file is going to be available on Patreon. Uh, the actual, not just this, but I have both setups in here that uh, I've got two different setups that you can take a look at, both of which, uh, one of which we created, the other one is going to be a kind of similar, similar setup. We just have a velocity field with a curve going through the middle with uh, the velocities on the outside as well. So uh, if you want to take a look at that before that other video comes out, then you can grab that file on Patreon. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.